All right. So this is active filter design, lecture 34. In the last class, we were looking at variations of the degenerated differential pair. Our original version was like this. I'm sorry. Uh, our original version was. like this okay so this current will be i naught plus vd by r and this current will be i naught minus vd by r. okay now uh, everything is fine with this except the fact that the headroom now needed is a lot larger because of the quiescent drop across the resistors. To fix, uh, to fix the problem what one might do would be to say hey there is a drop in the resistor because current is flowing like this. So if an alternate path was provided for the current in this fashion if in, in other words if you do not do not want this current to cause a voltage across the resistor all you need to do is pull that current out of the resistor I mean make that current bypass the resistor completely right. So in other words I should pull out a current out of the resistor this way and similarly pull out a current I naught this way correct. Now this uh, so now if you look at this node what do you see there are two current sources coming in which are I naught one current source of of value two are not pulling out. So what can I do I just can get rid of this whole contraption here correct you understand and uh, and do this isn't it in other words that single current source going across r can be split as as two current sources in series right the two current sources which go to that coupled node along with the two i naught can be removed because they do not add any net current into that node so what one uh, what's remaining is these two current sources which when redrawn results in the following textbook diagram this is I naught right. is this clear right. So as far as uh, differential equivalents are concerned and common mode equivalent is concerned this is exactly identical to the the original network. All right, because you know all that we have done is manipulate the position of the current sources which in an incremental picture will go away whether it is a common mode equivalent or a differential mode equivalent does not matter. So for all uh, signal purposes common mode as, as well as differential mode this is exactly identical to the previous network with the advantage that there is no longer a quiescent drop across the resistors and therefore you know a purported advantage of uh, this uh, implementation one might say is that the, the, there is it needs a lot less headroom correct unfortunately that claim is uh, you know is somewhat premature uh, simply because when one now examines the noise performance of this transconductor we see that the transconductance of this guy and this guy will be roughly the same order of magnitude right unless you want to spend a hell lot of headroom across these devices you understand. So since the tail current source transistors will have headroom of the order of the main transistors here the transconductance of the tail current source devices will be of the same order of magnitude as the uh, transconductor transistors therefore it follows that the noise introduced by the tail current source devices will be 
much higher than the noise introduced by the resistor. Why? The noise introduced by the tail current source is uh, the speckle density is 8 kT by 3 gm, right? Where gm stands for the gm of the device forming the current source, which we said is will roughly be of the same order as the gm of the transistors in the uh, in the transconductor. Uh, and if you wanted good linearization in the first place, how will you choose uh, gm in relation to r? If you want uh, uh, to linearize this transconductor, you would like to choose gm times r to be much larger than 1, which translates to the what do you call uh, the noise of the uh, tail current sources being much larger than the noise added by the resistor. In other words, the excess noise factor of this transconductor is very bad. You understand? And uh, then one might say, no, 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 I am going to make the, the headroom of the or the overdrive of the tail current transistors much larger in an attempt to reduce their transconductance because that is what is responsible for the noise. However, then this completely well, kills the other argument of needing less head. You understand? Okay. So, uh, but uh, you know nothing in the world comes for free. You know that is the bottom line, right? Uh, every solution is mostly I mean, see, we are now looking at a field which is fairly mature, right? So it's not as if uh, we are the first guys to come up with transconductors. So it's uh, uh, so any kind of new solution that you may think of and suddenly find that it consumes less noise and then consumes has greater linearity and uh, uh, you know lower noise than prior art, right? There is probably a catch somewhere that you are missing. You understand? So, if, uh, if we are the first guys discovering transconductors, then you know any small improvement one might make uh, might actually be a genuine improvement, right. But given that these transconductors have been around for 20 years now, right, it is not very likely that you know uh, on the fly, you know, some mo slight modification you make and and uh, you know suddenly it has got lower power, higher linearity, and lower noise that usually does not happen, right. It happens once in a while, but once in a very long while. You understand? So, uh, that is the, but nevertheless in spite of all these uh, uh, problems, uh, it still does not deter people from using them and claiming improved linearity and all this uh, nice stuff, okay. Uh, another minor issue with uh, these transconductors is that of parasitics, right. Now, there are parasitics at these nodes. All right. For differential signals, this node is anyway a virtual ground, right. So, now you have extra nodes in the signal path which are strictly not necessary, right, from the viewpoint of, of a transconductor. An ideal transconductor would just have two input nodes and two output nodes. Every extra node inside uh, basically causes extra poles slash zeros and all this stuff, right. So, uh, you know, there is an extra node here as you will notice, okay. Now, uh, in spite of uh, linearizing, there is still a problem with this transconductor. Can you or its uh, counterpart where this, uh, the tail current source was, uh, was here? Can you tell me what that problem might be? Again, let me remind you that it follows that the load network here is the same you know PMOS current sources controlled by some kind of common mode feedback loop. What do you think is uh, the problem with this? Well, yeah, that is extra you know uh, one remark she makes is that the transconductance will be a f now a function of frequency because of these extra nodes sure enough. Yeah, but hopefully uh, these poles will be far away or you decide to design only filters which are whose frequencies are much lower than all these parasitic poles, okay, that is granted. What else? Is there a more fundamental problem? Uh, okay, uh, of course, there is a whole bunch of problems with regard to mismatch between devices and what if this current is not the same as that current uh, 
we will return that uh, or defer that for a later discussion. But uh, if there was no mismatch and everything was as we put down here, what do you think is there a, a, a fundamental problem? Now what we have done is by choosing this gm times r to be a number much larger than 1, we have increased the linear range uh, by a large amount. Okay. So, can you comment on whether it is possible to use all that linear range or there is no, there is uh, some other roadblock that we have come across in the past, but there we inter uh, said it is not a problem. Yeah. So, now we said okay, we have done this linearization. So, in principle we are able to make this very large and still the voltage to current conversion will be linear. However, this is going to get into a trans into a into a filter right. So, this voltage correct what is the peak swing here versus the peak swing here. Do you understand the question? This is going to go into a filter, yes. So, can you comment on the peak swing at the drain versus the peak swing at the gate? It will be the same, it will be the same, it will be the same because by virtue of dynamic range scaling, correct. And how low can the drain go below the gate before the transistor gets into the linear region? One threshold, correct. So, the in spite of putting all this effort in making this very linear, it does not seem to be very helpful because what is the maximum v, vd possible before this transistor gets into the triode region yeah so if vd exceeds vt by 2 this transistor which i will label as m1 so if vd exceeds vt by 2 then m1 and m2 get into the triode region all right once they get into the triode region what happens so what is the problem with transistor getting into the triode region okay so everything all bets are off because uh, this voltage to current converter doesn't work anymore and uh, suddenly across the integrating capacitors you now have a resistance so what was supposed to be a current source has now become a resistor so i mean the whole thing just goes uh, to the dogs all right so we see that in spite of all the effort made uh, to make the transconductor more linear you know we have within quotes you know a silly problem so to speak right where uh, we see that the headroom across this device uh, m1 or m2 is limited so even though the voltage the inherent voltage to current conversion process can be extremely linear as long as the device operates in saturation we now see that because of the practical difficulties which are encountered when you put this transconductor in a filter the drain you know swings could in principle swing low while the gate swings high and uh, an unconditional limit on the transistor uh, staying in the active region uh, you could say is when vd is less than vt by is this clear okay all right now what do you think we can do to fix the problem? You know what the problem is?
what do you think the problem i mean what do you think we uh, how do you think we could fix the problem what is the source of the problem the problem is that a the voltage of the drain is swings okay two okay all right so uh, then uh, so the problem is that the drain voltage is swinging and it's swinging in the opposite direction so if we if we uh, disable the swing for example somehow we could get this to be at vcm rather than if we allowed it to be at a fixed voltage vcm does it st solve the problem or does it only solve it a little bit and still leaves the solves it a little bit because at least now the drain is at a fixed potential right uh, you know the double whammy is not there when this is going up the drain is not going down okay so if you want to solve the eliminate the problem completely what do you think pardon uh, okay well you know uh, both should be at the in the same phase well that's probably uh, a very difficult thing to do you understand i mean we have no control over i mean you can't make this guy swing in the same phase as this you understand it seems like you know a difficult thing to do what is uh, uh, a sure shot way of avoiding the problem altogether yeah, we i mean we we i uh, we can pull both i mean as long as the drains are the problem if these nodes didn't swing you said that the problem is mitigated somewhat and the reason is that the drain potential is at vcm so now the maximum swing is vt rather than vt by 2 okay so uh, if you want the maximum to be uh, swing to be even larger than vt what do you think you should do instead of holding the gates uh, the drains of the of uh, m1 and m2 constant at vcm if i held them constant at a much higher voltage right then i'd be doing so much better you understand eventually uh, that i will still be limited only by the linearity of the v2i conversion process the problem now is that the v2i conversion process is linear as long as the devices are in saturation unfortunately the drain is uh, swinging around okay which is preventing these devices from being in saturation in other words we are getting limited by m1 and m2 going into triode rather than the inherent linearity of the v2i conversion process correct and a fix around that is to hold hold uh, the drains of m1 and m2 much higher than vcm and uh, how would we do this uh, i mean it's it's uh, it's it's quite straightforward to hold this at a much much higher let me call this uh, v bias 1 v bias 1 okay but we uh, i mean it's straightforward to hold the the voltage of the drain uh, to some constant uh, value but finally we are interested in the current isn't it we want this vd by r so what do you think we should do in other words we want this we want this current in other words if you think of a black box here right the out of the black box must come this is a black box it has two terminals at least one must be the terminal which receives the drain of m1 correct and if this potential is held sufficiently high let's say is held at v bias 1 which is sufficiently high correct and uh, the other terminal must be able to push out i not plus vd by you understand so what kind of contraption must this box be what can, kind of uh, controlled source what kind of controlled source i heard two answers somebody said uh, voltage control current source another person said current control current source I'm glad somebody said current source at the end. Okay, so it must be a current source. All right. Now the question is whether it is voltage controlled or current control. If 
you have a voltage controlled current source what is the input impedance of a voltage controlled current source infinite so if you try attempt to push in current into a voltage controlled current source what will happen to the node potential it will go to infinity in other words this node potential will swing the moment this current changes if this box were a voltage controlled voltage source a voltage controlled current source okay now given that we want this voltage to remain the quiescent voltage here to remain fixed and does not and not to change even when this current changes it therefore means that the incremental impedance looking in here is look at this this current is changing in response to vd however we want this absolute potential to be fixed so that this device does not go into triode tri tri right if the absolute potential is fixed then its incremental impedance is zero is that clear so in other words this box got to be an incremental current controlled current source does it make sense all right so what is the simplest single transistor current control current source you know the common gate okay now you know two types of common gate amplifiers one is the one is the nmos common gate amplifier one is the pmos common gate amplifier so what do you think is appropriate in this situation okay let me just draw half the circuit so that we don't get cluttered here so all right so we have two candidates we know that this box must be a current control current source so there are two choices one is an nmos current control current source and the other one is a where should i connect the drain now where should i connect the uh, all right you understand okay which do you think uh, is uh, more appropriate here and why so let's say this was i1 this is i0 this is i0 this is i1 okay so what is the quiescent current here this is i1 plus i0 okay what is the incremental current here vd by r all right now what about here what is the quiescent current this quiescent current is i0 what is the quiescent current here i1 minus i0 okay I, and i'm connecting this ground to begin with what is the incremental current the incremental current here is vd by r so this current will flow which direction up or low it will flow up like this. all right okay all right so what is the uh, uh va va what is the quiescent potential at this point va minus vt minus some delta v okay where the delta v corresponds to that that transistor okay all right now similarly what is the quiescent voltage here what is it va plus
VA plus delta V plus mod VT. All right. And how would we? Ch I mean, if we wanted to make M1 work in the uh, saturation region, what would we like to do? We would like to choose the drain potential to be a very high. Okay. All right. Now, which of these things do you think makes more sense, and why? All right, to, uh, in order to be able to lead you to the right answer, uh, I mean, how do you, okay, this is the voltage to current converter, how will you make the complete transconductor? I mean, where is the out current output coming? The drain of? Okay, so I mean, how will you, I mean, what do you finally need? Which current do you finally need? V d by R, but actual current coming out of the drain of the current control current source device is in one case I 1 plus I naught plus V d by R, another case is I 1 minus I naught minus V d by R. From that we have to extract out V d by R. So, what do you propose we do? So, what we would have to do is to put another current source here. This must be I1 plus, correct? Uh, and in this case, put another current source here, which is I1 minus I naught. Okay? And can these be independent? Can this I1 plus I naught be independent of this I1 plus I naught? No. It's exactly the same reasoning we went through in the. In the uh, in the common mode feedback discussed for the for the simple differential pair, you understand? Again, if this uh, if this current source I1 plus I0 is not the same as uh, the lower I1 plus I0, the potential at the drain of this device will keep you know either going all the way up to infinity or going down to minus infinity. And this becomes a a problem. You understand? So this I1 plus I0 must be controlled by the sum of the I1 plus I0 coming uh, being pulled down, and therefore there must be a common mode feedback loop which goes and adjusts the top I1 plus I0 to be the same as this, and you know. I am not going to go through the whole thing all over again, but it is pretty much it is the same circuit. You have a common mode detector, you compare it with a common mode reference, go and tweak the gates of the PMOS devices which form that current source. Okay, And the same idea must also be applied here, correct. Again, this I1 minus I0 cannot be independent of the I1 minus I0 being pushed into the output node. Okay. So, now what kind of current source will you have? See, this current source cannot be independent, correct? So, what should I do? No, what did we do here? What did we do here? Okay. Okay. All right. Now here, what should I do in the PMOS example? I mean, what? You sense this voltage and go and tweak this current. Okay. So you sense this potential and tweak. Uh, this current source. What kind of current source? What kind of transistor will you use to make that current source? Yes, Sailaditya, what do you think we'll do? 
use an NMOS current source and then you tweak its gate in order to vary its current, right? And that So, you sense this voltage and go and tweak that current source such that this voltage is the same as VCM, all right. Okay. Now, can you tell me which one makes more sense? So, let us say the output common mode is set to VCM 1, okay. And in uh, as we discussed earlier, in a transconductor, it, it always makes sense to when you use when you are using it as a part of a filter, it always makes sense for the input and output common modes to be the same, right? Because then you can only design one kind of transconductor and then use it everywhere, uh, and you won't run into problems because uh, because in a filter we have seen that the output common mode of one becomes the input common mode of the other and all this other stuff, right? So if you want to avoid this whole business of having to design two different types of transconductors, then it makes sense to have only one, uh, I mean have the input and output common modes the same. Now, now can you tell me uh, which of these implementations makes more sense? All right, so in order to make the the NMOS stuff work VCM plus VD minus VT plus delta V right must be equal to VCM1 minus VD right. So, this represents the constraint on VCM and VCM1 in order to make this character work all right. Without the common gate stage, what was the constraint on? Uh, and if uh, I mean, in other words, if VCM1 had to be equal to VCM, then these two terms would go away, all right, and VD max would therefore be VT minus delta V divided by, right, and this is worse off than what we had earlier. understand all right how about here now I mean how high can you make this without uh, something bad happening Ideally, what you would you like to make this voltage? You would like to make it as high as possible. What is preventing you from making it as high as possible? The stop current sources need some minimum voltage that is delta V. So, the highest that this can practically be is VDD minus delta V, okay. All right. So, if this is VDD minus delta V. How high can this voltage be before bad things happen? This can go as high as VDD minus 2 delta, correct? All right. And on the lower side, how, how low can this go? So, this can go as low as delta V because what happens when this goes lower and lower? This current source will end up getting into the triode region, you understand? So, if you want to maintain all devices to operate in saturation, then you must make sure that this voltage remains between VDD minus 2 delta V and, and delta V. Right. In other words, you are almost able to use the entire range without pushing any of the transistors into the triode region. Is this clear? 
Ministry of Gender Inclusion and Teaching the student has the lower range of common law. No, why? But that will come from the input side. The input side is if it is Oh yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about this output node, right? What he's pointing out is when you connect the output of this transconductor to something else, right? This, there's a limit to how low this node can go also, correct? If this goes to delta V, then you're finished. You understand? All I'm saying right now is that this node here, the output of the transconductor can go pretty much, you know, almost uh, rail to rail, right? you leave delta v below and then 2 delta v from above and in other words you do not uh, you are not now constrained by some devices going into triodic. into the triode right so in other words the linearity of uh, of uh, the transconductor made like this will be limited by I mean, why are we getting into this whole discussion in the first place? Yes, so when I no, 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 I am not asking you what we have. I ask you why we got into this whole discussion in the first place. There was a limit on the VD because uh, on VD because like the VCM. Wanted those two to be equal. The VCM and uh, the input VCM and the VCM at the train to be equal. Yes, so the, I mean that was here, right? I mean that that we could manage even here without any problem. These two VCMs can be equal and M1 and M2 will be in saturation. But my VD should be less than equal to VC by 2. Ah, so the why we got into this whole discussion was that we wanted to make sure that I mean there are two uh, there are two limiting factors for the linearity here. One is the inherent limitation imposed by the GMR. In other words, the inherent uh, uh, li limitation of linearity imposed by the transconductor itself, okay. Uh, and two, you know, there is another limit because M1 and M2 can get into the triode region if the drain becomes too low compared to the gate, right. It seems kind of unfortunate that you spend all this effort trying to linearize the transconductor and suddenly the linearity just goes to hell simply because this main transistor M1 has gone into the triode region. So what we are saying is, hey, we would like to keep M1 and M2 happy, right? In other words, keep their drains at as high a potential as possible so that those guys never get into the triode region, right? But we are interested in their current. So what we need to do is to insert a current controlled current source at the which senses the output current of M1 and delivers the same current, right. But in a more convenient fashion in the sense that the output common mode voltage of the current controlled current source must be, we should be able to have that the same as the input common mode voltage of the transconductor and be able to swing by in principle by a large amount without causing any of the devices to get into the triode region, correct. This way the linearity of the entire transconductor is simply limited by, by the inherent V to I conversion linearity rather than some device getting into the triode. You understand? Okay. All right. I mean, it's like this. I mean, the, let's say it's a hot day and you go to Tiffany's and you want a glass of juice, right? So it's a hot day, so everybody and his brother is standing in the line, right? So you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait and then you go and get your glass of juice and then, you know, you spill the glass of juice because you didn't see an obstacle. You understand? So you put in all this effort to get your juice and then you screw it up by simply you know being careless, you understand? That is precisely what is happening here. You put in all this effort to make this thing linear, right? And then by some silly thing like you know a device getting into triode, you have lost all the, all the linearity, right? So this is just a way of fixing that, fixing that problem, you understand? And there are, in other words, we know that we need a current control current source, 
we are aware of two current control current sources right one uh, both are common gate amplifiers one is made with pmos transistors one is made with nmos devices right the nmos transistor based version is not a reliable uh, is not appropriate for this situation simply because if you want the input and output common mode to be the same then the amount of voltage swing that you can have is even in fact even worse than what you have before right on the other hand if you had a pmos common gate stage right you are doing i mean the output voltage can in principle swing by almost rail to rail without pushing any of the devices into the triode region and this way the linearity of the entire transconductor is limited by the fundamental uh, what do you call uh, uh, by the more fundamental v 2 i conversion linearity given m 1 is in saturation. Is this clear? All right. Okay. So, now we are ready to uh, so anyway by the way uh, I, I thought we discussed this earlier if uh, what was this called what is this called cascode but if you think about it it is nothing but a transconductor voltage to current conversion this is nothing but a current controlled a voltage controlled current source and that is feeding a CC CS right. So, a cascode is nothing but a cascade of a VCCS and a CCCS that is pretty much what is happening here also right. This is the voltage controlled current source, this is the current controlled current source. Similarly, this is the voltage controlled current source, this is the current controlled current source. However, there is a small difference, the subtle difference between the guy on the left and the guy on the right all right in the this is a cascode correct in the sense that we have discussed earlier. Here we see that the quiescent current flows in the same direction in both the devices whereas there it is like taking the cascode and kind of holding it okay. Though even though uh, from a signal picture point of view both of them are in principle equal you understand. So, this that is also a cascode you know where things are folded. So, this uh, this is what is called a folded a folded cascode you understand. So, now you got to help me draw the complete picture complete diagram of a folded cascode based transconductor. The input differential pair which converts the voltage to current can be any one of the two forms that we discussed earlier each with its own advantage and disadvantage right. And uh, because it is a fully differential structure now on each side there must be a, a folded cascode there must be a current control current source for each leg of the transconductor all right. These guys are the what do you think they are? They are the current sources which go and feed the common gate amplifiers. And what is what are these guys? These are the lower current sources. This is that I1 minus I0 that has to be removed. All right. So what should I do now? How do I complete the diagram? 
take what from where and connect to where okay let me enable the transistors before we get all confused m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 okay drain of m3 yes to what of m1 drain of m1 okay all right what else what is what about drain of m2 all right the other side very nice this must be vcm plus vd vcm minus vd so let me call this i not this also i not okay and it's uh, it goes i mean goes without saying that this is can be derived from a current mirror and, and all this stuff so this current will be how much i not plus vd by r and the other side will be i not minus vd by r and uh, okay so if i deliberately choose uh, if i want i not to, to flow if i if I, if i want this quiescent current to to also be equal to i not all right what should what current uh, i should make sure that these transistors carry a quiescent current of 2 i not understand okay so what uh, what should i do to all these uh, gates which are floating so one way of fixing all this is to use a that is the common mode detector correct and this must be compared to vcm why vcm because we want the input and output common mode voltages to be the same okay and uh, kick these gates so that the output common mode is equal to vcm can you tell me what the signs in the op amps must be plus on the left or minus on the left yes animesh plus on the left is that clear to everybody why plus on the left all right and uh, as far as stability and all this other stuff is concerned is exactly the the very same discussion that we had earlier you understand all right uh of course you know if you put down the full transistor schematics for uh for the error amplifier and for the common mode detector it you know it just becomes a lot more fluttery and you know it doesn't add too much intuition so it's but best to leave it like this okay so uh, again as a repetition what is the highest potential that this node can go to before any other devices gets into triode okay all right that has to be qualified a little bit okay so uh, what should this potential be or how will i get that bias voltage that voltage must be is derived from a for example a current mirror all 
all right what about this character I mean, what should I make the, what uh, is a reasonable value to make the quiescent voltage at the drain of M1? I mean, how should I choose the quiescent value at the drain of M1, which is also the same as the quiescent value at the source of M4 or the drain of M3? I should choose it such that M1 will, M, M1 remains in saturation and M3 should also remain in saturation. So, what is the highest value of the quiescent voltage which will keep M1 in saturation and M3 in saturation? Vdd minus delta V. Of course, you know you may want to move it a little not to operate on the edge, but have a little bit of margin. Okay. So, if let us uh, be adventurous and say this is Vdd minus delta V. If this is Vdd minus delta V, what must be the bias voltage at the gate? Vdd minus the source voltage is Vdd minus delta V, the gate voltage must be Vdd minus delta V minus another delta V minus a Vtp. So, this must be minus 2 delta V minus Vtp. Okay. That is the highest that voltage can be. So, if we call this V bias, that is the highest the that voltage can be, in which case the highest voltage that this node can go to before M3, uh, before M4 gets into the triode region is V bias plus Vtp, which is the same as Vdd minus 2 delta. And what is the lowest this voltage can go to? And the lowest it can go to is is delta V. Okay. Now, uh, what all problems do you think? Uh, okay, there are a couple of problems uh, here. Uh, what can you say is the output impedance of this transconductor? In other words, I mean, what is the meaning of output impedance of the transconductor? If I gave you a transconductor and told you to find its output impedance, what will you do? I mean, I will zap the input, connect it to 0, put a test voltage in the output and measure the current or push in a test current, measure the voltage depending on the uh, situation. Here it seems since many things are coming in shunt, it seems much easier to find the output impedance by putting a voltage and measuring the current going out of the voltage source while I short the inputs. So, to find the output impedance, I would put in the incremental circuit, I would put a test voltage here and measure the current flowing out of the test voltage. So, what would you think is the output uh, uh, output impedance of the transconductor? Pardon? There is clearly one part of current which is uh, nothing but this V test by R naught, R O n, where R O n is the output impedance of M 5. Okay. There is another current flowing through the drain of M 4 okay. and what do you think that is? Why will it be very small? Okay. So, uh, to find the output impedance looking in at M4, uh, M4's drain, one must realize that the source of M4 is not grounded, right? It is terminated in, in impedance which is ROP here, correct? And another impedance here, which is let's use the uh, as far as differential signals is concerned. Uh, this is GM has got some R O n, right. So, what is the impedance looking in here? Avinash. So, G m R O n times R is the impedance looking in here, right. That 
in parallel with ROP. So, which do you think will dominate? ROP, assuming ROP and RON are roughly the same order of magnitude. So, what is the impedance looking up here at the drain of M4 now? It is approximately GM ROP of M4 multiplied by ROP, correct? So, what is the total impedance? It is RON parallel GM ROP times ROP. So, what do you think that is approximately RON? In other words, the output impedance is being dominated by M5, okay? So, what do you think uh, simple fix is? You can put a cascode for M5 and improve matters, especially given that we are only, I mean, you can see that the lower limit is only delta V, whereas the upper limit is 2 delta V from the supply, right? So, if we choose the common mode to be VDD by 2, the fact that the lower limit is delta V, you know, is not very useful to us because if you want to have a fit a sine wave. Right, the maximum amplitude will only be VDD minus delta 2 delta V minus VDD by 2, correct? So, it seems uh, a no brainer that one would want to use a cascode for the tail current sources. I call this V bias 1, I call this V bias 2 and uh, what is the lowest V bias 2 can be while keeping all devices uh, operating in the triode region, in the in the saturation region? This quiescent voltage must be delta V. So, V bias 2 minimum must be V t plus delta V plus delta V which is V t plus 2 delta V. Does it make sense? Okay. So, uh, right. So, this is a a practical version of a folded cascode transconductor. That is exactly what you want. No? You want all the current to go outside. Pardon? Yes. Pardon? Uh -huh. See, when you measure current, what happens? I mean, what happens in practice? Is this going to be a true open circuit? There will be capacitance there. I mean, there will be. So, all that we want to make sure is that the output impedance is high. And the short circuit current is GM times VD. I mean, whatever, one by R times VD. That's all, right? Okay. Uh, all right. So this is a, a usable, practical uh, transconductor where all the swings are taken care of, linearity is taken care of, and one might even at a pinch say that since this voltage can be chosen to be very high, one might as well move the the current source from from here to here because now we can perhaps you know uh, afford a little bit of headroom okay so if you might try to drop too much voltage drop across i mean too much voltage across this then this potential will become so low that the tail current source will have difficulty being in saturation you understand so uh, and now how many extra nodes are there in the signal path 
ideally a good transconductor must have only two input nodes and two output nodes which carry signal right so how many more sets of nodes are there now which all this is one set this is another one and which is the third set the output i mean you need the input and the output right so the extra set of nodes are two sets okay so which we basically means what oh okay so yeah so uh, technically i mean uh, so this is also an, uh, you know uh, another set but you can see that the voltage so i mean okay if, can somebody tell me since she brought it up can somebody tell me what the voltage swing here will be no damped reduced by by how much this we have discussed this before isn't it if this is ch changed by delta v how much will this move change by Yes, people. Pardon? Is delta V by or by GM or not? That's how. Uh, we use this to estimate the output impedance of a cascode right why the output impedance increases all right it's all single transistor stuff you should be thorough with this uh, by now hmm? anyway so the voltage swing at these nodes will be this voltage divided by gmr not which will be a large number so uh, the parasitic currents flowing through the parasitic capacitance of the, those nodes will be of the order of you know v not divided by gmr not divided by i mean times sc where sc is the parasitic capacitance of those nodes right so uh, that current will typically be a very small fraction of the the current flowing through the integrating capacitors and can uh, in principle be neglected okay i mean when compared to for example the current flowing through the parasitic capacitances at these nodes right okay what is the voltage of those nodes vd because gmr is much larger than 1 so the parasitic current flowing through the capacitances or the current flowing through the parasitic capacitances at these nodes will be of the order of vd times scp whereas at these nodes will be vd divided by gmr not by scp i mean times scp so you can see that this current will be much small this reactive current will be much smaller than the other one so it's uh, mostly safe to neglect them though in some cases it can become important right all right but the bottom line is that given that there are at least uh, two extra pairs of nodes which are signal carrying the drain of m3 uh, the same argument well it will be a it, it will not be uh, gm times r not it will be uh, it will be gm times uh, r what is what she is pointing out it's a valid point okay so this voltage uh, what will this uh, this voltage swing be or rather if some current comes like this how much of it will go through the drain of m4 a lot okay uh, all right uh, so at high frequencies uh, what is what is the meaning of a lot 
so the looking in impedance uh, at the gate of uh, at the source of m4 is 1 by gm of m4 right and at that node there is also a capacitive path which goes to ground right that corresponds to the, the parasitic drain capacitance of m3 the gate capacitance of m4 and so on plus the drain capacitance of m1 so as frequency keeps increasing that parasitic capacitance will will shunt off some of the current and the rest of it will flow through m4 right so the parasitic pole at this node will be of will be at a frequency gm of m4 divided by cgs of m4 plus cgd of m3 and m you understand okay all right so uh so all i mean so bottom line is the more the number of nodes you add into a circuit uh, you know uh, the more the number of parasitic poles that you encounter all right and uh, so again you see that uh, already we have paid something to gain something what we have gained is an increase in the linearity of the transconductor what we have paid is now yeah, yeah all that stuff plus the fact that you now have picked up extra poles okay and we will see going forward that uh, that is not the only thing you lose uh, you also have another problem which is what do you think noise okay so I will draw a differential equivalent for noise analysis this is the incremental equivalent mind you So to find the short circuit noise current going out of the transconductor, uh, what do you think is the effect of noise of, let me call, label the transistors M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. Does the noise of M1 have any effect? Actually, there is another extraneous noise source. This is the noise due to the tail current source I0. Okay, can we consider the effect of uh, M1's noise? Come on, people, we have done this over and over and over again. Yes, Animesh. Because yes, why? Uh -huh. I mean, this is the same old argument that we've been through earlier, right? The transfer, uh, the transfer function from this source, this I, to this I out will be what? One by one plus GMR, right? And anyway, you've chosen GMR to be large compared to one because you want a linear transconductor, so it therefore follows that by the same virtue the noise of m1 does not contribute too much so let me just exaggerate a little bit and say no effect oh, oh.
ओके ऑल राइट सो एम वन इज टेकन केयर ऑफ वॉट अबाउट आई नॉट Let me call this i x. Let me call this i x. Okay, what is the transform from i x to i out? How much of i x will come through like, uh, for, to, uh, to the drain of M one? Almost all of it will come, right? So i x will come like this. Okay. Now, what happens to the i x? Almost all of it will go through M3 and thereby flow into I out. So, what is the transfer function from I x uh, to I out? One. Okay. All right. That's taken care of. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yes. How would you measure the output noise of the current of the this thing? You will put it into a voltage source and measure what. Noise current is coming, correct? Okay. So, uh, what about the uh, contribution of the resistor? It is four uh, kT by R times one. Okay. I out will be I not the uh, the, uh, the contribution due to I not. This will be 8 kT by 3 times order of gm of m1 times 1. All right. What about uh, m5? The transfer function is 1. Correct. So it's 8 kT. By three, gm five times one. All right. What about m four? All right. What about m four? No effect. Okay. What about m three? No effect. What about M two? One. Very good. So this is eight kT by three gm two. All right. So what is the total noise spectral density of the noise current coming out? Eight kT by three times gm two plus gm one plus gm five. Pardon? GM one is because I assume that the tail current source has got that device is roughly the same transconductance as M one. Okay. Plus four kT by. All right. And uh, if you want to find the excess noise factor, what is the transconductance? One by R. So this must be 4 kT times the transconductance, which is 1 by R times the excess noise factor, which means the excess noise factor eta is nothing but 1 plus 2 by 3 times gm2 plus gm1 plus gm5 times R. All right. So, do you think it's worse than before, or better than before? Earlier we had just one plus two thirds uh, times uh, gm one into r. Now we have all these extra characters gm five. Okay. All right. 
so as you can see folding increases the peak signal swings possible however it comes at an expense of extra poles in the signal path as well as extra noise okay no for the for, for the fully differential circuit yeah you uh, i mean the you find the snr of the single ended prototype at 3 dv that's all no it will be remain the same it's like having two filters one excited by vi the other excited by minus vi all the transconductors have the same etas right so all that you are doing is now having yes yes no you uh, i mean in the it's a, this is just a matter of notation isn't it so in a in a in a differential pair also you say gm plus vd and the, i mean vcm plus no, vd and you give vn plus minus vn minus is 1 volt then the differential output current that would be coming out of gm the 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 current coming out per leg will be gm of that half circuit times the input to that half circuit the uh, the i mean the, the directions would simply be reversed in the other half so as far as signal to noise ratios are concerned it's exactly equivalent to taking two single ended filters operating one with vd the other with minus vd and looking at the difference between the two right where the 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 signal to noise ratio will be 3 db better because the signal part is correlated whereas the noise is uncorrelated you understand okay uh so uh, another uh, you know passing comment i'd like to make is that if the overdrives of the of the uh, of all the transistors are roughly the same order of magnitude right which is what one would attempt to do because it doesn't make sense to you know have your uh, two volt headroom across i mean delta v of uh, across one transistor and 100 millivolts across other transistors whatever you do finally in a working design you will find that the delta v's are all ballpark same number okay now in which case these will all be of the same order of magnitude right which means roughly this number will be close to 3 times gm1 so you can see that the noise spectral density is the x or rather the excess noise factor is is uh, of the order of uh, 3 gm1 okay now you might come back and argue and say no no i designed this transconductor is only 1.4 gmr yeah sure right they're all of the roughly the same ballpark number you understand okay so you will find uh, i mean so what is the bottom line of course you you gain something by uh, losing something right so now the question now the, the real question is whether we are gaining anything at all right so what's the point in increasing the signal linear range right when you are adding uh, you know so much more noise so that's a that's a very good question right uh, but that still doesn't prevent people from going on using these transconductors as well as writing papers where uh, the linear range is phenomenal and then you'll find that the noise is also phenomenal and then at the end of it you don't really you are wondering uh, you, you know what did all this accomplish other than me writing getting some material write a paper you know you understand so uh, so these transconductor comparisons often tend to be uh, depending on the author you know very uh, 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 kind of dicey you got to be very careful when you say somebody says oh we have this fantastic transconductor you, you know that you can't get a better noise factor than excess noise factor than one right okay so from a simple excess noise factor point of view the differential pair is the simplest the fastest right the smallest uh, only thing is linear range is is not is not very large right so uh, and here come all these other competitors which have a much larger linear range but add lot more noise and a lot bigger and consume a lot of power right so then you left wondering you know uh, you know 
that guy was bad this guy is like you know seem you know promises to be better but this guy is just as bad and rather i might as well has well gone with the the simpler bad guy rather than the more complicated bad guy you understand okay so uh, yeah anyway, obviously my personal bias comes through across uh, right i'm i've always been a fan of this uh, the simplest differential pair and just go with it right take whatever linearity you get okay and now if somebody starts complaining saying hey but your filter is not linear then i'd say uh, uh, you know you take it or leave it you know if you don't want it fine you know go find walk and find something else you know if you can so especially for high speeds right we'll come to another set of uh, you know hopefully i'll motivate that uh, next uh, family of filters where you get really good linearity but uh, you know as I, as uh, you know he said you always lose something for something else right so you get uh, phenomenal linearity but unfortunately they can't go as high speed as gmc, GMC filters fundamentally if you look at the differential pair based gmc filters you can actually go as high as pretty much a big fraction of gm by c of the transistor itself right because integrating capacitor cannot be any lower than parasitic, parasitic capacitances so in principle you can go a reasonable fraction of when i say reasonable fraction it's like maybe 1/5 or you know 1/10 okay of the ft ft of the device because you have a whole bunch of other parasitic uh, other than cgs okay now uh, uh, but as i said and all these guys right with all this folding and uh, degeneration and all these things right you'll finally end up uh, because of all these extra nodes in the uh, uh, in the signal path you will find that as you add more and more nodes there's more and more poles in the transconductor which means that your uh, uh, you i mean your bandwidth is uh, of the filter that you can achieve is is uh, is not uh, uh, is compromised so uh, all these will basically get you somewhere between 1/10th and and 1/20th of the of the uh, ft of the device uh, you know at which you operate the devices okay so uh, with the differential pair being the fastest but uh, linearity being the uh, uh, the worst right uh, but uh, dynamic range wise you still are doing quite okay because even though the linearity is small the excess noise factor is also it doesn't help to uh, you know increase the linearity by a factor of 2 and add four times the noise right then you're doing you know just as badly as you were doing earlier you understand it only helps when you do uh, when you double the uh, uh, the double the linearity and add less than four times the noise then in principle you've gained something in the dynamic range all right so uh, a differential based base, uh, pair based filters you all always find that uh, uh, the dynamic range is okay but the linearity is kind of uh, limited and all these other guys you will find that the linearity will be very high but the dynamic range will still be quite poor because they add so much noise and the fact that uh, they will be uh, they will consume a lot more power you know as we saw that day to get the same gm the amount of power consumed in a differential pair is much smaller right you are getting a transconductance of 1 by r right but you need a the transistor gm to be much larger than 1 by r which means that the power dissipation in the transistor is much larger right so instead if you had just used the same power you will be able to use the gm of the transistor itself which is a much larger number right so uh, so you will find that all these uh, degenerated uh, uh, differential pair based solutions are are often very power hungry right and uh, dynamic range wise they are kind of all comparable to the differential pair based thing and uh, 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 you know not as great as the cm at first hmm? and then uh, uh, and then you have a whole bunch of people who say uh, we say okay you know at high frequencies is all this is a problem so i'll get uh, phenomenal linearity at, at all these extra poles only become a uh, a problem at high speeds so then i say no no, no i'm going to use this at low speed right and then uh, you know there's parasitic poles are not a problem but then we'll find as we'll find out going forward at low speeds there's a there's a much better thing to do right so uh, uh, you can do a much smarter or more linear integrator without all this excess noise and uh, so it's not clear what the uh, the 
uh, real role of all these uh, uh, these transconductors is. But anyway, it, uh, for what it is worth, uh, you know, you use this as a vehicle to learn uh, several concepts. One is uh, uh, is common mode feedback. One is uh, you know degeneration and uh, linearization, which uh, you will come across in several places, and the folded cascode, right? Which is a very common uh, you know circuit technique, and uh, also see several fundamental truths, which is the more complicated you make a circuit, the more nodes they are, the more power they consume, the more potential problems you have, and the more noise you pick up. You understand? So all these are uh, uh, you know illustrated very well in these uh, this family of transconductors. And uh, you have also several transconductors which are based on the MOS transistor operating in the triode region. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to discuss all these transconductors because uh, you know by now you should be in a position to be able to read up any paper and understand what's going on. Uh, okay, uh, and again it turns out that those uh, most of those techniques are are rather suited only for low speed because. The amount of parasitic capacitances that keep getting picked up in all those techniques also becomes starts to become very large, in which case one can fundamentally ask the question, hey, why am I using these in the first place? Right? When a much better alternative is available. Okay. Uh, all of you have actually, you know, built these uh, uh, filter. The, I mean, these filters in the lab. Uh, these are uh, what are called active RC filters, where where the op amp is used as uh, you know to perform integration right uh, using uh, you know you put a capacitor on the feedback path and and and, and all that stuff right i'll get to it uh, in more detail as uh, as we go along but uh, the concluding remarks on uh, transconductor capacitor filters are that uh, there are they are suitable especially when when the speeds or rather the omega nulls and the q's that your uh, omega q product that you wish to realize is a, a good fraction of the uh, the ft at which the transistors operate okay and uh, and but unfortunately the excess uh, i mean the moment you uh, you try to linearize any transconductor you will find that the excess noise factor of the transconductor starts to become quite large and uh, so some of the benefits of linearization go away simply because you've added so much more extra, I mean, uh, so much more noise than is strictly necessary in order to realize a voltage to current conversion. Okay. So these are the uh, the concluding remarks, and uh, now I I think you should all be in a position to uh, to be able to read a uh, GMC filter paper and understand what is going on. Okay. Uh, you will find uh, you know any number of papers in the literature they are all of them are variants of the basic uh, stuff that we have discussed in class right different ways of doing the v2i conversion in a linear way all right different common mode detectors different different places to connect the common mode feedback loop to right so for, for example we have always discussed uh, this technique where the pmos transistors are are controlled whereas the NMOS tail current sources are fixed. You know you can uh, flip the two, right? Or uh, uh, you know you can have a combination where part of this is independent and this is independent, and then you know vary both, right? Uh, so that will so you know the number of uh, possible topologies is virtually infinite at this point. Okay, but uh, uh, the basic ideas are all very very similar. You understand. Okay, so uh, the last couple of remarks I wish to make are topology related. Um, let me quickly get back
ok. Now this is single ended equivalent of a fully differential filter and uh, so uh, how many pairs of differential nodes will be there? In reality this will be a, a pair of differential nodes, this will also be a pair of differential nodes. So in other words, uh, there is one common mode feedback loop necessary to keep the common mode of those two nodes fixed. Similarly, there is all you need is one more common mode feedback loop which keeps the common mode of that set of nodes fixed to VCM ref. Correct? And so far we have discussed having every transconductor having its own common mode feedback loop, right. So for example here the only common mode feedback loop which attempts to fix the voltage across C2 is what? GM3. That of GM3, correct? Whereas here how many common mode feedback loops are there if, if every transconductor has got one common mode feedback loop? Three of them are try simultaneously trying to fix the, uh, the same thing. I mean instead of having three separate loops you might, we might as well have one CMFB loop, right? And have the, in other words, we can share the error amplifiers of. I mean, we can we can share the common mode detector and error amp of GM1, GM2, and GM4. There is no need to have separate error amps. Does it make sense? Right? There is also no need to have separate common mode detectors. You can merge all of them into, you can share all of them. Right? So, you just have one common mode detector and one error amp. Just the control voltage goes to the CMFP nodes of GM1, GM2, and GM4. Is that clear? I think that about uh, finishes uh, the discussion on uh, transconductor capacitor filters. Uh, it is perhaps a good time to stop. Uh, we have already discussed uh, the effect of you know parasitic poles in the transconductors and then we have seen how the uh, if there is a parasitic pole the effective Q seems, I mean Q is enhanced with respect to the design Q. Uh, so, and uh, so on, a finite gain kind of leads to a drooping response and uh, uh, and so on, ok, alright. So uh, practical problems with respect to uh, uh, transconductor capacitor filters uh, are that the omega naught of a biquad is basically for the form gm by c, correct. The transconductance uh, depends on some GM, R, all sorts of stuff and the capacitance depends on uh, the density of the capacitors in the transconductors, I mean in the uh, in the uh, of the capacitor, integrating capacitors. So with process and temperature this will change and this will change, right. Whereas Q depends in principle at least on I mean functions of ratios of uh, transconductors and Capacitor. ratios of capacitors. Q is dimensionless, so it cannot depend on a dimension quantity, it must only depend on ratios of ratio. like quantity. So you will generally find that uh, since it depends on ratios of capacitors and ratios of transconductors, if all transconductors vary in the same way, then Q will remain invariant, uh, invariant right. So, uh, uh, so uh, variation in Q will be very small. However, variation in omega naught will be can be very large right typically it's not uncommon for uh, gm to vary by plus minus 20% and c to vary by another plus minus 20% which means that the filter 
center frequency, I mean the band edge can vary by plus plus minus 40 percent. You know, understand many applications is absolutely unacceptable. Okay, the whole idea of filters get rid of something and get something in, right? Now, if this guy seems uh, has a bandage which keeps wearing all over the place, it is not doing its job properly. You understand? Which means that there is a there is a problem. So we need to do something to fix it. What do you think we can do? You are, I mean, imagine yourself. You are in a lab. Okay. You have uh, somebody gave you this GMC filter, which is supposed to have some uh, bandage frequency. And then you measure the characteristic, and you say, "Oh my God, the uh, the frequency is totally off." Right? I, uh, somebody told me it's going to be a one megahertz bandage fifth order Chebyshev. This looks like fifth order Chebyshev, all right? Right? But the bandage is four megahertz. Okay. All right. So, what do you think you can do to fix the problem? So, you must have, if you have to fix it, you must be able to, I mean, this must be fixable, right. So, in other words, you must have some knob by which you can tune the, tune something in the filter. In other words, the bandage, you have some knob to tune the bandage. So, there are, uh, you know, two ways of, uh, at least two ways of tuning the bandage. One, vary all GMs by the same factor. Two, vary all Cs by the same factor, right. Uh, or some combination of of the two of them okay so if you want to bring the filter back to its uh, original i mean to the desired bandage frequency what what all steps does it involve one you first measure the bandage only then you'll be able to figure out, figure out which way the correction must be applied correct so you must first have you must, it's understood that you have a a filter whose bandage is tunable. Two, you must have a system to measure the measure the frequency response or measure the bandage one way or the other. And three, use the I mean compare the uh, the actual bandage frequency, the desired bandage frequency, and turn the knob in the right direction until the actual frequency and the uh, uh, the desired frequency match. Right. So, what kind of system is this? This is a feedback system, right? And as you can see, it's kind of uh, somewhat complicated because you now need to measure measure the band edge of the uh, of the filter. Okay, you compare it uh, with uh, what do you call the desired uh, the band edge, and then you need to tweak stuff to go back. All right. So the simplest thing you can do is uh, is to say okay how would i find the banded frequency of a filter of a second order filter i have a second order bi quad okay that's say i have a bi quad it's Okay. So how would I find? Uh, I gave you a box with a bi quad. I mean, a second order bi quad with some unknown omega naught and unknown q. I ask you to find the omega naught and q. What will you do? Hey, you guys can't be making this mistake after doing the experiment in the lab. Okay, so uh, uh, huh? what uh, uh, Raghava? Huh? So this uh, there are several interesting uh, aspects. One is uh, to say find the frequency at which I mean, observations are mod h of j omega naught is what is q and angle of h of j omega naught 
is minus pi by two. All right. So, at you know at a pinch, if you want to find the uh, the uh, center frequency or omega naught, all you need to do is find find the phase at which uh, find the frequency at which the phase difference between the input and the output is is 90 degree. It will always be uh, the output will always lack the input. So, all that you need to do is find the frequency at which the output and the input sinusoids uh, are off by 90 degrees all right. And uh, once you have found omega naught, how will you find q? So, you just find the, uh, the magnitude at omega naught and that will give you q all right. So, this is all very nice, but uh, uh, you have to do this electronically. Now, you cannot keep shipping one guy every with every filter you uh, design right, do uh, tweak this and that and all that right. So, but thankfully whatever you can verbalize clearly you can always build a circuit to do it, you understand I mean uh, so there is nothing no big deal right. The moment you uh, uh, clearly know this is what you are going to do, it is uh, straightforward to design a circuit which will which will do you know the job which is find the frequency at which the phase difference between the input and output is 90 degrees and tweak the uh, uh, the gm or the c or a combination of both such that the, the frequency is what you want okay and it seems like a pretty complicated thing to do right so we'll uh, i will see how we one can kind of cheat and get away with uh, something a lot simpler right uh, then having to go through this this complicated process uh, we will see this uh, tomorrow okay or uh, Wednesday see you.